Now, when you need help in public, don't ask a group of people. Instead, approach individuals. Because of something called the bystander's effect, the group of people may not help you. This social psychology theory states that people are less likely to help you when others are around them. They assume someone else from the group will run to your rescue. If you're driving in the city or another area with a grid-like design and think you're being followed, turn right or left four times. You'll end up at the same place you were before, and if the car behind you does too, you're probably being followed. Don't go home and try to lose them. If you're outdoors while a storm is approaching and your hair stands up, find shelter immediately. Static in your hair means positive charges are rising through your body, reaching toward the storm's negative charges. You're likely to be struck by lightning. If a shelter isn't available, squat low on the ground on the balls of your feet, put your hands on your knees and your head between them. Making yourself as small as possible will minimize the contact with the ground and the damage from the lightning. Always carry a small mirror with you while traveling in isolated areas. It'll come in handy if you get lost. If you're stranded in the desert and a plane flies overhead, point the mirror toward it to reflect the light. If you don't have a mirror, signal planes overhead by waving both your arms up and down. If you're stranded somewhere in your car, don't abandon it. It's more challenging for rescuers to spot you without your vehicle. Unlike what's shown on TV, when someone's about to drown, they won't wave or cry out. They'll have their head tilted back, submerged in water. They'll attempt to keep their mouth above the surface by using their arms. When you see someone looking like they're floating or bobbing, trying to get their head out of the water by trying to climb onto the surface of the water, they need help. If you can't swim and you've fallen in deep water, don't panic. Hold your breath and let yourself bob up to the surface. Keep your back and legs straight. Try performing little kicks to bring your body back to the surface. If you're trying to save someone who can't swim, never approach them directly. They'll likely bring you down in their panic. Sneak up on them from behind, slip your arm across their chest, and make sure their hands aren't facing you. If they grab you, they can pull you under. Try to swim below them, come back a bit further away, and try to help them again. If you come across a grizzly bear, it's not your day. Now, don't run and don't make eye contact. Slowly walk away if it isn't close to you. But if it's charging, stand still, you can't outrun it. Speak in a clear, monotone voice and don't scream. Now, prior to this, you might want to research to see if there are grizzly bears where you're traveling and take pepper or bear spray with you. If a bear is within 25 feet of you, then use the spray. If it attacks you, curl up in a ball and lie on the ground. Stay quiet, don't move or panic till it goes away. Now, if a polar bear is chasing, but it's far away, start dropping clothing items, a hat, scarf, or a shirt, and run away. Polar bears have short attention spans, and they may stop to sniff your clothing. This will give you time to head to safety. By the way, if both of these bear encounters happen to you, then please remind me not to go on vacation with you. Moving on. If someone is choking, but they're coughing, don't intervene. Coughing means air can get both in and out, and they've got a partial obstruction in their airway. By helping, you could cause a backflow of air, which could either force out the hazard or dislodge the blockage and cause a full block. Just let them cough it out. Only help when they can't breathe or cough. When caught in a strong rip current, never swim against it. You'll tire yourself and it won't end well. Swim parallel to the shore fast, but stay calm and comfortable. Even if you get further out, you'll eventually escape the current and can head back to shore. Thumbs are the weakest part of someone's grip. If someone pulls you by the wrist, don't twist your arms in their hand. Try to push away, starting right where their thumbs are. Notify your state department if you're going abroad. In the US and some other Western countries, you can tell the Department of State that you're going overseas. In the event of a natural disaster or a political conflict, they'll know that you need to be evacuated. They'll also update you on things that happen in the country you're visiting to protect you from trouble. If you find yourself in a stampede of people, you're in trouble as soon as you fall. 
Don't curl up in a ball and wait for it to be over. This can cause more damage. Try to grab someone's leg as they run past you to help yourself up and keep going. Sometimes, camping trips end with people lost. If you're in such a situation and trying to walk out of the camping site, take burned coal or wood sticks with you. Use them to draw messages on trees, rocks, or logs. The markings will stay there for weeks, and it'll be easier for the rescue party to trace you. Always carry a needle in your first aid kit. If you're lost, you can make a compass with one. You first need to magnetize the needle by rubbing the eye against hair, fur, or silk around 100 times. Fill a container with water, place a leaf on the water surface, and rest your needle on the leaf. It should start pointing north to south. When calling emergency services, first tell them your exact location and then the problem. Even if you get cut off, they'll know where to send the police or an ambulance. If you have a fishy smell in your home, call a licensed electrician immediately. It can come from overheated plastic and electrical components that can cause an electrical fire. It might be from an outlet, a switch, an electrical breaker, or something else. Like the fish you're baking in the oven. If a snake bites you, there are a few ways to tell if it was venomous. You can ask. It probably won't tell you. Venomous snakes usually have multiple colors and cat-like pupils. Look at the bite area. If there are two deep puncture wounds, you were most likely attacked by a venomous snake. If the bite mark has tiny sharp teeth and a U-shape, it was probably non-venomous. Whatever the case, call emergency services and snap a picture of the snake if you can. Using your mouth to pull the venom out is even more dangerous. You've got more chances of getting poison than removing the toxin from your body. If you're traveling and exposed to freezing temperatures, you're at risk for frostbite. At first, a part of your body will become hard and pale. Then you'll experience aching, stinging, and numbness. To avoid frostbite, apply petroleum jelly on your nose, ears, and the tips of your fingers and toes. You uh, did remember to bring some, didn't you? This brings up a reminder. If you're shivering while in the cold, you're safe. Your body is trying to warm you up by contracting your muscles. But once you stop shivering, and if you grow tired and want to sleep, then find a warm place immediately. You're at risk for hypothermia. You'll need a warm compress on your chest, neck, or lower tummy. Never apply a warm compress to your hands or legs. The sudden temperature change could force cold blood back into your heart, lungs, or brain, causing your core body temperature to drop. If you're lost and you need to drink water from a stagnant source, always boil it to purify it. Untreated water has bacteria or other oils and chemicals that can be harmful to you. The exact temperature and time you need to boil the water depend on the altitude. To be on the safe side, try to boil the water for 3 minutes. When cooking oils start to boil, they'll smoke and then catch fire. If that happens, turn off the heat and don't remove the cooking pot. Cover it with a metal lid. Fire won't survive without an oxygen source. Use baking soda to extinguish small grease fires. You'll need a ton of it to do the job. And only use this tip when the fire is small. Never use water. It'll cause the oil to splash and spread the fire. You got all that? Good.